everyone happy what day are we on tuesday tuesday of the new year well i'm excited to jump in today we are rolling into part two of three on preparing our body to for success for our new year's resolutions um i am excited to jump into this obviously when i say new year's resolutions i should also say health and fitness <laughs> resolutions if you got if you got a uh, career goals and life goals and relationship goals that that's not <laughs> that's not necessarily what we're going to cover here but in terms of our physical body the the health and fitness goals that we have I'm excited to jump into it. In part two today, we're going to kind of um, continue up the body from what we did in part one yesterday, working on our ankles, well, really our feet, our ankles, and our knees, and doing some really key mobility work to get them ready for any activities that we do, because really anything that we do involves us using our legs and feet in some way, shape, or form, whether we're walking, hiking, running. Um, playing a sport, exercising, squatting, lunging, hinging, all, all the above, we use those things. So that was really important. Next today, we're going to be working on the hips and the lower back to prepare things like our glutes and our core to fire well again and to balance our, keep ourselves balanced so we're not getting pulled off to one side. Because often single-sided imbalances are where the root causes of many injuries and tweaks come from. And so this is one of my favorite um, topics to go through. It's probably one of the most consistent things that our, our clients work through because many of us, through activities like sitting or maybe with the way that we've walked or maybe how we drive or maybe how we uh, take, take time off or maybe it's even how we hold our kids on a regular basis, these activities that we do throughout our, our lives really impact how our hips stabilize themselves and that's where we often create imbalances and our core gets dysfunctional and we're not stabilizing the self in, in the right way so i, I we, we work on this with all of our clients whether it's just our, our like our clients that want to be able to um pick up their their kids or go for long walks with their dogs or or be able to uh, get on the floor and, and play around or whatever, like uh, those kind of basic movements all stem from hip, glute, core strength and stability. Um, or whether it's our, our golfers that deal with back pain or, um, well, actually it doesn't have to be, even be with back pain. If the core is out of function, then the whole body can get impacted. So the, often this is directly associated with people that have lower back pain or hip pain. So this, these techniques we're going to go through today will improve that, but it can also be a <laughs> factor to the rest of the body um and by the way guys if you are live i think i just saw sharon what's up sharon good to see you um if you guys are live and you have any questions as i'm going through this or if you want to say hi or whatever feel free i'm just a little bit further away from my screen so you guys can see me when i'm about to get rolling into these techniques so i will address you and say hi and answer questions and all that good stuff just feel free to type them in but if it takes me a hot second it's just because screen's a little bit small on the, on my end where I'm here. Um, so anyway, if you, if you guys are checking it out live, feel free to say hi, feel free to give me a thumbs up in the chat. If you guys watch this replay later, uh, feel free to type in replay and say hi. And again, you can ask questions, even if it's during the replay, we'll be happy to be checking the comments over the next couple of days and answering any questions that might come up. Um, so anyway, back to what we were talking about. So in terms of this glute core complex around the hips, around the back stability, this is stuff that's applicable to regular daily life. It's applicable to our, our sports, whether it's golf, whether it's tennis, whether it's being a triathlete, whatever, all, all like this, this is massively integral. And these kinds of techniques are what, oh, and these specific mobility and releases, I would say are probably the most consistent things that our clients do all, all of them do at some point or another. Um, so as important as the feet, ankles, and knees were yesterday, and, and something that's absolutely a staple in for, for most individuals and what they need, uh, I would say kind of bar none, this, this section today is, is the most consistently important uh, key for bringing back full range of stable motion and getting us back to where we want to go. Um, 
I didn't introduce myself to start this off, and so I guess I'll jump into that really fast just in case you don't know who I am when you watch this video. My name is Madison. I'm the founder of a program called Health by Ratio. My team and I consist of licensed physical therapists, functional movement coaches, and functional health coaches, and we take a holistic view at getting our clients out of recurring pains and uh, recurring injuries and get them moving back to full range of stable motion so that they can bridge the gap back to whatever active, active life they love, whether that is just fitness, whether that is athletics, whether that's daily living and how they, and how they feel and move. We want to make sure that we get them back to full range of stable motion around the passions that they love to do. So um, this is in this particular video series that we're doing, parts one through three, we're really covering the key mobility sides to what the body needs in terms of range of motion, releasing tension, getting our body feeling better, uh, getting some aches and pains and tightnesses out of it. And uh, there's obviously a very, very, very important need to work on the stability of the body, the strength of it, the functional movement of it as well. But if we don't have the range of motion to move correctly, if we got some tightnesses from the holidays where we were sitting and maybe uh, hanging out with family a little bit more, not moving as much as we, we should have been, maybe we're on the couch in some funky positions, <laughs> maybe also combine that with some inflammatory foods that might be tightening us up, all that kind of stuff, we might have some extra tension that needs to be addressed so that we can get into whatever our goals are for health and fitness goals are for 2022 without dealing with the risk uh, as, uh, as high of risks of injury or tweaks that take us out of our game. Like we, we get passionate about, I'm gonna get in shape. I wanna lose this weight. I wanna get stronger. I wanna be able to run this speed. I wanna do X, Y, and Z. And then we get started in a couple of weeks or months into our routine, our rhythm. We get the, the, every day the, the rug swept out from under us as something gets hurt, something gets tweaked. And then now all of a sudden we have to spend our time not doing our, our passionate um, forms of exercise, getting ourselves to the level of health and fitness we want. We're instead having to spend our times in therapies and in treatments and getting uh, injections and all that kind of stuff that, that don't allow us to really get to where we want to go, but it just it helps us manage the pain and chase symptoms. So let's get into our main topic for today. Let's address the, the key areas around the hips and the back to help us with hip stability and hip symmetry, as well as, I shouldn't say hip stability, hip mobility, hip symmetry, and that is impacting at the whole body, but especially around the hips and the lower back. Like I, I would say that's probably the, the direct impactors right away, but obviously the core and the glutes impact how the knees and the feet stabilize themselves. They impact how the shoulders and the neck stabilize themselves. So it's really his whole body. And we're gonna hit four areas coming up and I'm gonna do what I did yesterday. I'm gonna have each area with a one minute focus. That doesn't mean you have to move on in one minute, but if you wanna keep working an area, please do so. And the indication of whether you should keep working it or not is do you feel the area get less painful by the end of it? So meaning when we start pressing into these areas, think about a deep tissue massage that you've gotten where they, they find that, that knot in your neck or your back or whatever, and they start working into it and it hurts. Oh my gosh, it hurts so good. It's seven or eight out of 10. Whew, that's painful. And then all of a sudden, after they've been working on it for a minute, two, three, whatever, it suddenly goes, ah, it releases and relaxes. And then they move on to the next spot. That's what we're looking to do. And sometimes that'll happen in 30 seconds to a minute. Sometimes it'll happen in three to five minutes. It just depends on the level of tension you have in that area. So I'm going to, um, for the sake of time, do this to a minute each side and then move on. But if you want to keep working through it because you haven't felt that quote unquote release yet, please do. So we're going to be starting off with the hip flexors. Then we're going to move to outside of the, the outsides of the hip, the TFL. Then we're going to go to the glutes. Then we're going to go to the lower back. And for this, the first thing we're just going to do with our hands. We can do this with equipment, but the hands are probably the easiest way to get into the hip flexors. And the next thing that we're going to need for the remainder of the spots on our body is just going to be a single ball. So a trigger point ball of some kind. So if you have a lacrosse ball, that's probably perfect for this, but a tennis ball could potentially work. Uh, golf ball's a little bit too small. You could use a baseball. It would be pretty intense, um, but it, it would work. If any of these things that you have are a little bit too firm, 
Um, you can always drape a towel or uh, a blanket or something like that over top of it to make it a little bit softer if you'd want. But that'll be coming in the, the remainder of the release, the mobility work that we're doing. So let's start off with the hip flexor. How we're gonna do this is we're going to lay down on our back and we're gonna get our leg bent up and relaxed at 90 degrees. If you have something in front of you to just rest your feet on, like my coffee table, great. If you can't, you can just put your own leg, uh, your own, uh, your, like your calf on top of your knee. Then we're gonna take both of our hands and we're gonna position them just to the inside of our hip bone. So if we find our, our, the edge of our hip bone right there, we're gonna work just to the inside of this guy. And we're gonna start from the crease of the hip flexor and then work our way up toward the lower belly because this is the psoas muscle that's the longest muscle in the body. It connects from the inner thigh through the torso and attaches to the vertebrae from the lower back up to the thoracic spine. So it runs front to back right here. So it can, when this thing gets tight from say, sitting for a long period of time or doing a bunch of running or bike riding, when we get this thing really overactive and tight, it'll pull through our torso into this lower back and create all kinds of problems. And then it affects how the core and glutes fire and all kinds of stuff. So we're gonna work along this psoas is the hip flexor muscle. We're gonna run, work along it to see where there's gunk that needs to be released. So we're gonna be pushing in with both of our hands as we're going up this thing. Now, getting into your position, laying on your back, you don't wanna do this upright because that'll cause you to kind of tighten the core up and that'll fight this thing. I'm gonna start our timer here. We're gonna start at the crease of that hip. We're gonna press inside of that hip bone and see do we have any gunk in there? Is there any hurt so good tension that we should be, that we feel? If not, creep the hands up a little bit higher, push deeper into the lower abdomen and work through towards the back of the hip. If not, work a little bit higher. Now I'm up kind of more toward my belly button region. I'm trying to push through this thing towards the spine and I'm massaging up and down to see, is there any tension? Now, right now, where I'm at in my belly, I don't feel anything when I'm pushing into this. This is not an area where I have gunk. That, if you don't feel any tension, if you don't feel any soreness, if you don't feel any hurt so good um, sensations, that means there's no gunk to work through. So I'm gonna work back down to where I was right at the crease of the hip. That's where I feel some, feel some good stuff to work through. And I'm just gonna start massaging into it. I'm just going to move the hands along. I can also go side to side along this area. So I'm just getting friction along that gunky tissue. And I wanna breathe through my diaphragm. So nice deep breaths through my belly. I'm just gonna keep taking those nice relaxing breaths. And if I wanna get a little bit of movement to this area, I can occasionally straighten my leg down and then bring it back up just to get a little bit of movement to the area. And again, I'm consistently massaging into that spot. I'm not moving off of it. I'm staying on that kind of hurt so good area and I'm committing to getting it to release here. And right now we're just coming up on that minute. So we're gonna switch to the other side. If you wanna keep working that hip, you're more than welcome to. And now doing the same thing to the other hip. And you might find that one side is more tender than the other. Like for me, this right hip that I'm working on right now, this is more intense than my left one was. That's not uncommon, but that is really important to notate, to be able to say, ah, okay, I have an imbalance at my hips. If you have an imbalance of tension at your hips, that's probably one of your lowest hanging fruits and the root causes of why your back is stiff or why one of your knees gets hurt or why you have plantar fasciitis to only one side or why your neck hurts only on the left hand side or whatever it is. Single sided injuries often stem from imbalances at the hips. So if you find that one side is worse than the other, spend more time on it. But we're focusing no matter what on breathing through that belly or massaging into the area. We're trying to get that thing to release and relax a little bit. And we're coming up onto our minute here. Again, if you want to keep working through it, please do. But now I'm moving on to the next area of the body, the TFL, the outside of the hip. So this is the hip bone to the outside where this meat is right along the side of our, our hip bone there. Now, the most intense version of this 
is laying down, well, this is technically, there's more intense versions of this, but the most intense version I'm gonna to cover today is laying down on your side, or you can do this up against a wall as well. So how this works is we're gonna take this ball, we're gonna place it along the side of the hip, and with our knees bent here, we're simply going to move onto our side. So I got this ball wedged right into my hip as I'm positioned here. Now, I wanna make sure that I got some nice support for my neck. I'm gonna have, I can take a little bit of weight off of the, the leg at my hip. I don't have to put all of my weight here. I can position this leg a little bit higher if I want. And now I can scoot a little bit more up or I should say forward or backwards. So I can work either kind of more toward the corner of the hip bone, so I'm like right on that edge, or I can work a little bit more toward the, the side of the butt. There's kind of this window that I could be working through. If that's too intense though, you can also do this against a wall. So you could position this ball and you can just lean towards a wall. Now, if you're doing the standing version, you want to relax the hip, the, the leg that's toward the wall. So if I'm releasing my left hip as I'm leaning up against this thing, I want to relax that left leg so that that hip is slack as I'm doing it. Now, either way, whether I'm standing or whether I'm laying down on the ground, I'm going to be focusing on, first and foremost, breathing through that diaphragm. Get my belly expanding and contracting. As I breathe in, feel the belly pull, uh, pull out. And as I exhale, feel the belly coming in a little bit. That's just relaxing our nervous system. It's getting some, uh, our, our body to kind of disengage a little bit. Now, what I'm going to do is I can do a combination of either bending and extending this lower leg. So I can bend my knee and straighten it back out. So that creates a movement to that TFL. It's creating more blood flow. It's getting that gunky tissue to get better hydrated again. Or I can uh, um, create some scrubbing into it by shifting my hips forward and backward, or I can move my body up and down a little bit. So I'm getting some cross fiber friction. That's again, for the purposes of kind of gently breaking apart this tissue so that we get blood flow to the area. Just like if we were working out and we do a bunch of push-ups or a bunch of squats or a bunch of lunges, we break down the muscles that we're working, and what does the body do? It pumps a bunch of blood to that area. Why? Because it wants to repair that area. Well, in this scenario, this gunky tissue isn't very well hydrated. So we are trying to pump blood to it so that it rehydrates itself, and then it can glide again. And it's, that's why we're, quote unquote, breaking it down. Now, we're coming up on our time. If you want to keep working on that hip, you're more than welcome to, but otherwise, we're going to switch to the other side. And now, you, again, you might feel like one side is more intense than the other. For me, that original hip was the tighter side. This side doesn't feel so bad. Whether you're on the wall or standing against the wall or whether you are uh, working on the ground and starting to move around on it, whether it's bending and extending your knee, whether it is moving up and down or front to back on this guy, just getting some good blood flow scrubbing into it while belly breathing, diaphragmatic breathing as you're going through this. Now I'm curious, I, obviously you guys might not be able to talk in, or type in this very moment, but after you're finished with this side, the TFL is one of those ones that's really prevalent to right to left on which side's more intense. If you notice that you have one side that's tighter than the other, let me know which one is, would type it in, whether it's right or left, let me know which one your tighter hip is. I would be curious in the comments. Now, we're coming up on that minute here. If you've gotten this area that you've been working on to release and relax a little bit, moving on to part three. Part three, we're gonna work on the glutes. We're gonna hit the piriformis in particular, but you can really explore anywhere along the glutes for this. And so this region, we're gonna be taking our ball and we're gonna be working along kind of the side 45 degree angle of the butt, but we have kind of this general region that we can be working through here. And how we can hit this thing is laying down again on our back. We're gonna bring this leg up uh, so that it's just kind of the, my Achilles right now is just resting on my knee here. I'm not necessarily crossed in a figure four. I'm more in this position. I'm gonna place that ball right into the corner of my glute. And then I'm going to shift my body 45 degrees onto that butt here. So I'm going to be 
working, like I'm, I'm basically pivoting myself so I'm creating some uh, tension onto that ball here. Now, I can then rest my head. I don't want to strain my neck as I'm in this position. And again, we want to start off with some belly breathing. I think I got some people updating me on YouTube as well as <laughs> on on uh, the, the on Facebook. Looks like, oh, what's up, Tony? And it looks like Sharon, the left side is tighter. The right hip for the, the TFL for Aaron is, is significantly tighter um, versus the other one isn't. That's, again, Aaron, that's a really good indication of, okay, some of my imbalances are stemming from that right side. I got all this tension on one side and very little on the other. So let's continuously work this thing over the coming week or two to get this that right hip to calm down and open up so that the body's not getting pulled off to one side. Um, looks like Bill's dealing with the left hip more so. That's all good, good guys, like good awareness. Now, with this piriformis, as we're working this thing, we can create some movement to it by bringing the leg down and pulling it back up, bringing it down, pulling back up. We can also scrub into it a little bit just by shifting the hips side to side a little bit and getting some kind of cross fiber friction. Now, if, you're, <laughs> if you really are glutton for punishment, you can also bring yourself all the way up onto this and you can then get kind of into a figure four position your whole body onto this thing and really dig deep into that piriformis if you're brave enough. This is really intense. The laying flat on your back is, is often good enough for this. But continuing to breathe, continuing to move and get some blood flow to the area. And once you're ready, we are moving to our next spot. I'm gonna flip around so you guys can see me here, getting that ball into position. The, uh, right along the side of the butt, and then shifting your hips on toward that ball. And again, you can kind of scoot around, feel free to explore, find that hurt so good region that you need to work through, committing to just that one area. We'll start with our nice belly breathing, nice diaphragmatic breathing here, trying to work through, again, kind of along the lines of the TFL. This one is really prevalent where it's like, oh yeah, that one side is much harder than the other side. So uh, if the, often I would say the, whichever side the TFL is tighter on, the piriformis is also tighter. So if you were having a lot of tension on the right hand side of that, that side of your hip, you will also find that the right butt is gonna be a lot, have a lot of tension in it. Not always, but often. So working through your movements here, getting the leg straightened out, bringing it back up. Feel free to start kind of rolling into it, massaging into it, going up and down or side to side, but all the while continuing to breathe there. Almost done here, guys. Keep going. I'm gonna just check what the chat is saying. I need to get a, I need to get like a third device that's right next to me so that I can actually see what people are saying. Um, do, 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 do. Jana, great question on that right hand side with the um, sciatic pain. If the sciatic nerve is getting irritated from the piriformis, then yeah, releasing into that piriformis can be a really good effective way of creating some slack to the sciatic nerve. With one exception, if you get onto this uh, area, and it creates more of a nervy sensation. It's not like a hurt so good muscle tension, but you feel that sciatic nerve flaring up. And this is kind of the rule of thumb of any part of your body. If you feel some type of nervy sensation, this is the, uh, the, the quote that we talked about yesterday from Kelly Starrett, um, is if it feels sketchy, it's sketchy. Like if it's giving you a nerve pain, that means it's bad, move. So either position to another area, Often you can just move a little bit higher, you can move a little bit lower, and again, create some slack to that uh, nerve itself. But we don't wanna be feeling a nervy sensation. So that's a really good question. Um, sciatic nerve can also be triggered from the lumbar spine as well, which is what we're about to do right now. So sometimes that piriformis is one of the key areas for that type of sensation, um, and sometimes it's gonna be the back itself. So. Next and final area that we're going to be working on is the QL, which is the muscle that runs right up from the kind of top of your hip bones here on either side. So here's my lower back. I got these two hip bones called the SI joints. 
And if I go up toward the lower ribs here, I have this soft tissue that's right in the sides of my lower back that runs along that lower spine. That's where we're gonna be working through. So we're gonna be placing that ball somewhere into this region. And how we get to this is laying down again on our back and we're gonna position that ball to the side that we wanna start on. And we're gonna lay down on the back and to get the lower back on that side just a little flatter, because if we're arched up in the back, we're not gonna feel that much pressure here, we can bring that same leg up. So I'm working on my left side here. I got my left leg knee bent up and I can even position, I can, by rolling a little bit my whole torso to that side, I can get some good pressure into this ball. I'm just kind of scooting around right now to find the specific spot. There we go. Now I got my tension point that I want to release here. So I got my pressure right into that hot spot. I'm going to be taking some nice deep breaths. Again, we don't want any nervy sensation here. We want to feel like this is a, a good deep tissue massage kind of pain that we're feeling. Now, as we're on this ball, we can create a little bit of movement to the area. Uh, by extending the leg and coming back up. That doesn't make a significant impact to the area, but it does move it a little bit. But also just by kind of rocking side to side into this, we'll kind of scrub and massage sideways into this fiber, and that will get the muscles to get a little bit more friction, a little bit more blood flow to the area, all that good stuff. We can play around with the arms a little bit and raise them overhead. We can kind of almost do like snow angels to see if there's certain angles that need more or less work, but all the while breathing through that belly. And if you felt that area relax, we're gonna move to the other side. And here, we're going to have that ball in that same position, or, or I shouldn't say same position, it could be a total, it could be a different position, but more meaning in the general region of the lower back. But one side might be uh, higher, higher one spot, the spot might be right above the hip on one side versus the other. Explore it, find wherever you have that quote unquote hurt so good. And if it all feels the same, if it all hurts, then just pick, pick a spot. You can choose anything you want. It's really good to just release one area versus trying to do general massaging to the whole area because you're, by you really effectively working on one spot and that one area, <sighs> releasing and relaxing, it actually creates slack to the rest of the muscle tissue. So the whole thing improves there. So that's really, really important to work just to one area each day. If you wanna spend more time, like we're already cranking out like a good um, 10, 15 minutes on, on just this release work. But if you wanna spend more time and hit other spots, that's great, but you gotta make sure that each one you're working on releases and relaxes, that you feel that type of shift from that seven out of 10 to five out of 10 or a four out of 10 or a three out of 10. Sometimes, sometimes it'll fully release. Sometimes you won't even feel it afterwards. Most of the time it'll go from like something really intense to like moderate intensity. You're like, oh, this isn't so painful anymore. So feel free to scrub in, feel free to move around, explore around with the body, working into this area, keep breathing through that belly and and working until you feel that actual sensation release. Um, let's see. This last move, I found the spot then. All good. So, uh, so Aaron, the la this last me on me back, found spot on the left hurt so good, but ball in one spot hurt so good all the way down. Is that okay? Um, if it, uh, like, again, kind of the sensation of hurt so good isn't like a bad, like, zinging nerve pain, more it's like I'm getting a spot that I just kind of feel, um, I feel a broader region releasing, that's totally fine. That's actually a great thing. But, like, with the if it felt like a bad pain that was, like, fire, like there was a, a, a twitch down the body or, like, a, just something lit on fire or lava flowed down your body, that's the thing where it's like, oh, get off of that. Like, just move off of that right away. Um, that means you're on a nerve and, and you're pissed it off. So just immediately shift. And that, that's kind of, yeah, broader region, totally great. You, you are actually probably finding a really good tension point that is, it, by you releasing that, you're creating so much slack to the rest of the area. You're really loosening up that back there. So, yeah, that's a really good thing to be working through. 
Cool. Great questions, guys, and great feedback. So that, everybody, was the hip and back series. We started off with the hip flexor itself that is massively important, the way that it runs through. We're going to stretch that thing right now. We're going to do two stretches for the body. Um, we're going to stretch this guy after we release it because that psoas pulls on us so much. It actually, that psoas, when it yanks on us, it also causes that QL to tighten up. So the two things that we started and finished with are, are kind of complements to each other. Uh, and then we worked on the lateral components of the hip and the TFL and the piriformis to help release areas like this, uh, where the sciatic nerve runs, or also to help us even out hip external rotation, which is so prevalent in how we walk, how we run, how we squat. When those things are out of balance, we get pulled off to one side over and over again, and we start to get these tweaks to everything in the body. Like we, we start loading into one foot differently than the other. The knees, one knee does something different than the other. The spine obviously doesn't like getting pulled to one side, whether that's the lower back, mid back, neck, all the above. So these are all really important facets to getting the body back to balance and restoring our ranges of motion back to where they need to be. Now, we're gonna finish with two key stretches. The first stretch is the kneeling hip flexor stretch. And if you can't kneel, you can do this standing with your back foot in a staggered stance up on your toes with the foot straight and you're gonna go through the same thing. Otherwise, if you can kneel, feel free to get like a pillow or a cushion or something on the ground so that you have something comfortable there. We're going to, first and foremost, just get to a 90-90 position. I'm active on that back foot. I'm going to first think about squeezing the glute or whatever knee is on that ground. So I'm squeezing this glute here. Then I'm going to shift my hips forward just a couple of inches. I'm not if I have the glute relaxed, I'll be able to go way into this. I don't want to do that. That's going to overarch my back and can piss it off. I want to squeeze the glute and just subtly move forward a couple inches. And I'm going to start to feel the stretch into the front of that hip flexor. If you want, you can have something next to you for balance here so that you can support yourself. But we should feel this nice stretch. Take a couple of nice deep breaths here. And the next thing that we're going to do is take a big breath. Exhale and swing the arm up of the same hip that you're stretching. So we're bringing that same arm straight up into the air. Now I'm gonna feel an even deeper stretch in that hip. I'm gonna take another deep breath, and on this exhale, I'm gonna pivot slightly toward the front knee. I can also lean a little bit, just slightly, just a couple of degrees. I'm not trying to make myself into a big crescent here. We, I see people all the time doing this kind of a thing and overarching. That's a little bit too far. Try to keep the glutes engaged and just do some slight movements. You're gonna feel this nice deep psoas stretch there. Hold that for a nice deep breath again. And moving to the next side, same thing. First and foremost, squeeze the heck out of that glute. You can even put your hand there and make sure that it's tightened up. Move the hips forward just a little bit. If you're standing, it's the same idea. Squeeze the glute, then move the hips forward just a little bit. And we're gonna hang out there for a couple of breaths and at about the 20 second mark, we'll finish with the arm up and the slight pivot over that, that front knee. So nice deep breath. Exhale, bring the arm up. Rotating slightly, slightly pivot. You'll get that nice deep hip flexor stretch here. Good, nice job. Now, we're going to, there's a number, <laughs> there's a number of other stretches we can do for the hips, a number of other stretches we can do for the back here. But what I'm going to transition to is a hamstring stretch. Now, you notice we didn't release the hamstrings today. We didn't do an actual hamstring uh, massage technique. And that is not because the hamstrings don't have gunk in them, but it's often because the hamstrings are really tight because of the other stuff that we released. Most of us that have these tight hip flexors get pulled into positions where the hamstring gets pulled taut. And all this thing has a ton of tension. It's kind of like, it's basically like a band that gets stretched really tight the whole time. But it's actually stemming from the things that are above and or below that are pulling on it. So by us releasing these areas around the hips, we've created some slack to the hamstring. Now we can do some dynamic stretching to this area and open it up a little bit. So for this, I'm gonna have something that I can pull my leg up with. This could be a towel, this could be a, I'm using a resistance band here. 
Um, obviously, it could be like a rope or a stretch strap if you have it. But we're just going to pull this leg straight up from the foot. Obviously, you can hold on to this with one hand or both hands, whatever your preference is. And from here, I'm going to get a little bit of movement to the area. I'm going to bend the knee and extend the knee. I can also point and pull the toe and get a nice calf stretch as I'm doing this too. But I'm going in and out of a little dynamic movement. And I can also, if, especially if you have some issues with sciatic nerve, you can get a little bit of a nerve glide with this by inverting the foot, so angling the foot in, and pulling slightly across the body. Again, be gentle with this. You don't need to crank into these ranges of motion. You're just going to a nice, comfortable stretch here. The, if you want to explore, you can do more of a windshield wiper where you lower the leg down to the side, laterally getting a little bit more of an adductor stretch, and then come across the body, and you'll feel different pulls on that hamstring connection as you do so. But just exploring some movement, getting in some good range of motion to this guy, pulling uh, down the toes and pulling them all that good stuff. And let's switch to the other side. <sighs> Pulling that foot up, feeling free to bend and extend the knee a little bit, getting some dynamic movement to the area. <sighs> Moving around the ankle a little bit. <sighs> nice deep breaths. If you want to get a little bit more lateral, feel free to go into the nerve floss for the sciatic nerve here and or open up and stretch out our, our groin or inner thighs a little bit more. Still uh, working on the hamstring connections, just on a different part of the hamstring with each of these stretches. Just getting some nice dynamic movement to this guy. Nice. So guys, this, like I said, is a really great protocol to go through to explore imbalances from the right to left hand side. While you're doing a stretch or while you're doing a foam rolling or trigger point technique and you feel like one side's tighter than the other, that's the area that we gotta work on more. That's probably where more of our low hanging fruits are actually being impacted. So I'll, I see there's other couple of questions and I will address those before I um, jump off on that. But I just want to specify that like we were really searching for single sided imbalances. Often you will find like <laughs> I, would, I, I would say probably more often than not, um, like with our clients, if you have a problem side, like let's say um, you're, you're a client like Orly who is dealing with uh, right like IT band syndrome right around that greater trochanter in the hip. Or if your clients like Ted who are dealing with uh, chronic lower back pain, but to one side with the sciatic around his golf swing, or um, dealing with uh, consistent SI joint instability, um, like Debra, who we had, who, who like was a runner and always was throwing out one hip or the other, or Loretta, same thing. The those um, imbalances are stemming from asymmetries, and so. By finding where the tension is greater on one side versus the other and fixing it, you're getting it there. Uh, you're going to correct the body, but I, I lost my train of thought there for a second. The, if the tensions often come from the non-pain side. So when, when someone gets into there, they'll be, they'll be like, I always have issues with my right SI joint, but holy cow, that left TFL was brutal. Oh man, I didn't realize how tight that was. I always thought that it was my right side. No, the, the body's interconnected. So whether the pain or the injury is showing up on the right versus the left, that doesn't mean that that's the root cause of it. So we always want to explore both sides of the body to see if there are, uh, where the greater tensions are. And, and then the next step is we got to stabilize this body correctly. So this is all really great that we just did, but we also need to make sure that we're activating these muscles. We can get all the deep tissue massages we want, but if we don't actually train the body to move better, to move with this range of motion correctly, then we're, we're not necessarily doing ourselves long-term good. We're doing ourselves short-term good. We're feeling better. We're releasing some tension and all that good stuff. 
but we're not necessarily uh, teaching our body how to move correctly with it. So that's where functional and corrective exercises are going to come into play. And that is something that I'm going to address a little bit more on uh, tomorrow's part three uh, uh, Facebook and, and YouTube live where we're going to be finishing up this whole body reset, where we went from our, our ankles and knees up to the hips and, and back, and we're going to finish off with the shoulders and the neck. And I implore you guys, no matter what, whether you have issues down at your feet or whether you have issues at your back or whether you have issues at your shoulders or your neck, do all of this. Don't just cherry pick one of these three parts. Go through all three of these guys because the whole body is interconnected. As the great Thomas Myers has said in his uh, book, Anatomy Trains, is that the body is less like 600 individual muscles and more like one muscle with 600 attachments to the body. Meaning the body is an interconnected web. There is no one part of it that isn't impacted by another part. It's all attached. So if you have problems in the back, it, it, lower back, and you find tomorrow you got all this crazy tension up in the neck or yesterday you found that the bottom of your foot was super gnarly. Yeah, it's connected to the back. You don't even have to guess. It just is. So you, if you find these tensions, no matter where it is in your body, that means it's impacting how your body is moving and compensating. So we want to treat the whole system. And that's why holistic movement patterns are so important too. We treat the whole system on its mobility side, but then we also want to treat it on its movement side. And we're not just doing isolated clamshells and glute bridges all day every day not that those are bad they, there's a time and a place for them but we're not just doing those things we want to make sure that we're translating this to dynamic movements that our whole body is doing on a regular basis cool so i'm going to address the um other questions that that came in but guys if you are are uh, finished up at this point with the release work for today and the stretch work for today Hope that you enjoyed it, and I look forward to seeing you on tomorrow's call or the replay as well. Um, oh, and I was going to say, uh, in the comments here, let me know how you liked it. If you have any questions, always feel free to ask. Um, but I'm curious as to when you were working through these areas, are you noticing one side that is tighter than the other? And is that side the pain side or is it the non-pain side? I'm just curious. Like, are you finding that, oh, there is a lot more tension on my non-pain side than the pain side. Feel free to type that out in the comments there. All right, so let's see here. Do, 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 do. Tony, so with regards to the QLs are always tight, especially on my right, uh, right side. And uh, the, I, I'm glad that you're working on that hip flexors. Like obviously you're, you're actually in our program and I, like <laughs> the reason why those guys are, are on your list every week is how important the they are interconnected like that hip flexor and that ql work hand in hand and so as you are releasing one and releasing the other you're creating slack to the whole system and then the subtle activations that we're having you do when you're walking and correcting that walking gait as well as some of the more functional patterns that we just got you started in all of that is is going to complement that stability but i'm really excited for your functional workout call i think with coach heather tomorrow um where we're going to get in some like true dynamic strengthening. Like I, I look forward to getting you a little bit sore there, but all this gluten core stability is what's gonna help with that QL tightness calming down. Um, oh yeah, Aaron. So if you're dealing with the um, bottom of the foot, yeah, absolutely get into the, uh, get into the cap, get into the whole section. There, again, there's no one thing that is an individual attachment. If you're having issues, what's up, Michael? Um, and, and actually Michael can attribute to this. Michael was dealing with plantar fasciitis when he first started with us. Um, if, if you're having issues with the bottom of your feet here, that tissue wraps underneath the heel and comes up and it also kind of crisscrosses like a stirrup and wraps up to the sides of this. So in that video, we release the calves, but we also work through the lateral components of the ankle, like the um, perineal and the posterior tibialis, which all of those connect. Ah, we got a stellocyte, but stellocyte. Um, we it connects down into that plantar fascia line and pulls from above. So yeah, uh, that that especially the beginning section of that series yesterday would be really important for if you're feeling, finding the bottoms of your feet cramping in that plantar fascia line. So absolutely, check it out. Uh, let's see here. Left psoas was so bad. My right thoracic has troubles. Maybe that's why hips feel so much better. Yeah, Sharon. <laughs> yes, <laughs> absolutely. 
if that left hip flexor is pulling on that left hip forward, maybe deactivating that, that glute complex a little bit more on that left-hand side, think about every time you step on that left foot, your right side of your spine and back are trying to stabilize. So if one side isn't engaging very well, you're going to have extra activation on that other side. So you're like that cross body pull, there's all these fascial lines that run from one side to the other. That cross body pull that if one hip flexor is significantly tighter than the other, that often will link up to like your, the opposite shoulder, the opposite thoracic spine or the opposite neck. So absolutely continuously, work through that tighter side and uh, obviously do, doing what we did today, whether it was the massage work to it or the actual um, stretching, focusing a bit more time and energy to that, that tighter side is a key for it. Um, let's see here. Awesome. Perfect. Well, uh, Michael, uh, thanks for popping on. And uh, like, I, I'm pumped at how your body responded to the program. I love how you've been able to feel around your workouts and golf. And uh, Tony, uh, I'm glad to hear you enjoyed today's call. I look forward to seeing you on tomorrow. I uh, love what you're doing in the program right now. And I'm excited for your workout tomorrow. It's going to be fun. Um, and everybody else, uh, I'll look forward to potentially seeing you live on either Facebook or YouTube for the third and final part of this three-part series and getting ourselves ready for our 2022 fitness and health resolutions. All right, everybody, have a good one. My pleasure, Aaron. Talk soon, guys.